guy walks into a pub, says to the barman, have you got any helicopter flavored crisps? The barman shakes his head and says, no, we've only got plain. <laughs> This is your first time in one of these rooms, isn't it? Everybody seems to think we keep people in these rooms for hours on end. You know, sweat them out for a while. It can be a bit tedious with this waiting. The truth of the matter is we've just got lots of paperwork to do. I never got why they made these rooms so plain. You stare at the walls and you feel like the room's shrinking. And what are these lights? I swear to you, sometimes I walk in here and I get a bit dazed. So if I do give you weird looks every now and again, it's because I have to squint my eyes more lately, you see? Left me glasses at home. Please. These are just my readers. <laughs> and don't worry too much about this. I say if you look at it long enough, you start to see yourself differently. But of course, that could just be me. So, Mr. Hannigan, do you mind if I call you Mark? Uh, yeah, sure. Mark it is. Do you know why you're here, Mr. Hannigan? Uh, the, the officer that arrested me said something to do with Becky. Is she OK? Do you know Becky well? Yeah, she's my girlfriend. Uh, we've, we've been together a uh, year and a half now. Um, we, we live together. I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky to have her. She's, she's an exceptional person. Um, Detective, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, why, why exactly am I here? Do, do I need a lawyer? Do you think you need a lawyer? Sorry, I don't, I don't quite understand the question. Would you mind telling me your whereabouts on the 7th of November? Uh, yeah, uh, I was at home for uh, most of the day. I was uh, rearranging the, um, uh, the, the, the patio and, uh, and doing some, some weeding in the, in, in the garden. Uh, uh, Becky was at her mother's for the day, and I haven't heard from her or seen her since. Is she OK? Why was she at her mother's? She hadn't seen her in a while, and she was having some problems with her heating. I offered to help, but Becky said she'd rather go alone. Sorry, Detective, why, why, why exactly am I here? Is Becky OK? Becky Hall was found dead at Kringle Lock Solid Waste Transfer Station. She'd washed up along the shore this morning. We're waiting to hear back from forensics who are trying to establish the precise cause of death. The reason we've asked you here today, Mr. Hannigan, is that you and Becky Hall's mother are allegedly the last two people to see her alive. I know this is very tough news to take, but I need to ask you several questions about Becky Hall. Uh, yeah, OK. When you last saw Becky, did she seem pensive? Pensive? Yeah, you know. Nervous, distracted, or perhaps 
somewhat stressed. I don't, I don't think so. She, um... She, she hadn't slept well Friday. No, she, she hadn't... She hadn't slept well all week. I, I asked her if there was anything I could, I, that I could do, and she said I wasn't the problem. What was the problem? She, she, she didn't say. She just stared at me. And then, and, 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 um... And then she said she was running late. And then she left? Yeah, it was, uh, it was all very quick. What was the last thing Becky said to you before she left? When she was, when she was leaving, I, um... I, I told her that I loved her, and she... She said, um, she said, I know you do. I'll, um, give you a minute or two to take all this in. Sorry to keep you waiting. What the fuck am I doing here? I've got things to do. You can't just arrest somebody and then not tell them what the fuck for. Besides, I've been waiting here for fucking ages. What have you been doing? Getting a lunch break? Or two? Hey, I'm talking to you. Yes, well, like I said, sorry to keep you waiting. The files are not going to read themselves. Is this your first time in... Mm. First time in one of these rooms, is it? The fuck do you think? I'm not entirely sure what to think, to be honest with you. But I'm quite sure you don't like rooms like this. Rooms that make you feel insecure and neglected. Rooms that you know you don't get to leave until you've learnt a lesson. Like being sent to the headmaster's office for using language like that. Oh, you're funny. I've never met a policeman with a sense of humour. It's detective, actually. And I'm quite certain that I'm not the first detective you've ever met, Mr... It's Jacob. Jacob, yes. Do you mind telling me your whereabouts on November the 7th, Jacob? No. I don't have to tell you anything. In fact, where the fuck is my lawyer? OK. We'll get you a lawyer. But first, do me a favour, if you would. Tell me, do you recognise this person? Um, yeah, that bitch. Excuse me? She's right pain in the arse. She's always asking us to do things. What sort of things? Jobs, you know. Nothing makes her happy. Except that pet she's got. Pet? What pet is that? Pathetic weakling, she calls Mark. She just snaps her fingers and he comes running like a fucking dog. Man of so self respect. And what's that got to do with you? Everything. We worked our asses off left, right, and centre, and she's the one who gets the promotion? Bullshit. 
Do you know why you're here, Jacob? I don't care. Becky Hall was found dead this morning. What a shame. Did you kill Becky Hall? No. Do you know who did? Now stop wasting my time, detective. So, you didn't kill Becky Hall, but you do know Mark Hannigan. Tell me, how long have you known Mark for? Mm -hmm. Ever since he came to me for help. He never knew how to do anything. He always lacked self-confidence, absolute pussy. I've helped him his entire life. I helped him get a job. I helped him get a swanky house. And then she comes along, strings him up, tells him what to do, how to do it, when to do it. She used him for his own self-gain. And she stole our promotion. And then she gets herself in trouble. The irony, huh? Are you happy she's gone? I'm never happy. You could say the world is a better place without her. This coffee is fucking awful. You should see what it tastes like in prison. Fuck you! Terribly sorry for your loss. No mother should go through this process. I'll make this quick. I just need to ask you a few questions about your daughter. I just can't believe it. My poor baby. Mrs. Hall, when you last saw Becky, did she? mention anything about her relationship with Mark? She told me that she hadn't slept well the entire week. She said that Mark had been acting increasingly strange. She was just really worried about him. Why was she worried about him? She couldn't tell me. In fact, I don't even think she knew herself. She told me that she loved him but that he was getting harder to love. She didn't even know whether he still loved her or whether he resented her. Mrs Hall, when Becky came to your house on Saturday to fix the heating, did she seem out of character at all? My heating? There's nothing wrong with my heating. Becky rang me in the morning to say that, that she needed to speak to me in person. But when she arrived, she, she just seemed unsure of herself. Like she didn't know what to say. In the end, she was able to tell me that she was thinking of leaving Mark. Ever since her promotion, he seemed to be acting out of character. Mrs Hall, to your knowledge, has Mark ever threatened or been overly physical with Becky? No, 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 no. Mark loved her to bits. He wouldn't have laid a finger on her. Then... how was he acting out? Be Becky said that he was acting colder towards her. Like he didn't want to be with her. But then the next thing, he'd be buying her gifts. He even bought her favourite flowers. Freesias. She loved Freesias. Had Becky ever mentioned the name Jacob to you at all? Jacob? No, I'm afraid not.
Mrs. Hall, what was the last thing that Becky said to you before she left? Um, she checked her phone. She said she was going to be late for dinner. And that, that she'd got to go to the grocer's to get some vegetables for Mark. Mrs. Hall, like I said, I'm terribly sorry for your loss. But you have my assurances that we will get the person that done this. That'll be all for now. <laughs> I just wish I'd told her one last time how much I love her. Mr. Hannes, call me Mark. Mark. Have you ever heard the name Jacob? No, it doesn't ring a bell, sorry. No? You've never heard Becky mention this name at all? Not, not, not to my recollection. What does it have to do with Becky? Well, let's see. Mark, how would you describe your relationship with Becky? Would you say you've grown apart in recent weeks? Grown apart? No, we... No, we, no, we loved each other. We, Be Becky would start to seem distant, but I would buy her flowers and, and chocolates to cheer her up. How often would you say you argue with Becky? Very little. I, we... I, I just I just did whatever she wanted. I just wanted to make her happy. Mark, are you aware that Becky had plans to leave you? What? She told her mother she could no longer live with your increasingly erratic behaviour. We found a bag packed full of Becky's clothes hidden away in the closet. Inside was a note. It had been opened. It read, I love you, but I'm afraid of you. And I think it best if we spend some time apart. I've, I've never seen that note. I, 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 I didn't know Becky felt like this. Mr. Hannigan, earlier you told me that the last time you'd seen or heard from Becky was when she went to her mother's. Yeah, that's right. We found this message on your phone. Timed a couple of hours after Becky went missing. Hey, I'm just going to the grocer's to get some vegetables for dinner. I hope you're OK. I never saw that message. Like the note that Becky left for you? Yeah. Yes. No, 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 no. I, 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 I never saw the message or, or the note. Well, it's marked here that you read it. But I didn't read that message. That's not what it says here. I think I would remember reading that message, Detective. I, I think I'd like to leave now. I'm afraid you won't be leaving any time soon, Mr Hannigan. CCTV captured this image just after Becky walked down to the riverside. You, you must be mistaken, that's not me. I, I was at home. Well, it sure as hell looks like you. I, 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 I would remember being there. That's, that's not me. Do you want to know what I think? I think you saw that note that Becky left for you. And I think you couldn't stand the thought of her leaving. And you flew into a fit of rage. I also think that you saw the text message. And knowing where Becky would be, you hid in wait for her, down by the riverside. No, no I would never hurt Becky. I loved her. You, 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 you're, you're wrong. I... I've just spoken to forensics. And they've confirmed that the cause of death was strangulation. They've also confirmed that Becky had several fingernails missing. Mr Hannigan, on a subsequent search of your property, we found a jacket. A jacket identical to the one you see in that CCTV image. 
And in the back of that jacket were tears. And in one of those tears, we found a fingernail. We gave the fingernail to forensics, who examined it. And they confirmed that it matched Becky Hall's perfectly. I don't, I, I don't, I don't understand. I, I, didn't have, I, di I didn't have anything to do with this. Mark Hannigan, you're under arrest for the murder of Becky Hall. You don't have to say anything unless you wish to do so. But anything you do say will be taken down and given in evidence. You'll now be remanded in custody to Wandsworth Prison until a date can be set for your first court hearing. You don't, you don't understand. I would, I, I, please, you, you don't understand. I, I wouldn't hurt, I wouldn't hurt her. You can keep my handkerchief.